And today, a father did everything in his power to convince a jury that the cry for help on that audio tape was not Zimmerman, that was his son. ABC's Matt Gutman was there. With grief etched on his face, Trayvon Martin's father on the stand. My world has, has just been turned upside down. Tracy Martin, called by Zimmerman's attorneys, asked about this 911 call the night his son was shot. He's yelling help? Yes. Uh, what is your I was listening to his life being taken. Today, he said those howls on that tape were his son's. I didn't tell him, no, that wasn't Trayvon. I kind of, I think the chairs had wheels on them, and I kind of pushed away from the away from the table and just kind of shook my head and say, I can't tell. But homicide investigator Chris Serino says that's not what he told him when he first listened to it. He looked away and under his breath, as I interpreted, said no. George Zimmerman's fate could hinge on those screams. And in its first full day on the case, the defense pleaded for witness after witness. All Zimmerman friends all agreeing. That's George's voice. I thought it was George. Yes, definitely, it's Georgie. They want to say he's the victim, because when he's the victim, now he can use self-defense. However, under cross-examination, Detective Serino noted when Zimmerman heard that tape, he didn't think it sounded like him either. I believe his words were, that doesn't even sound like me. Diane, that 911 audio is such a crucial piece of evidence that 11 of the 12 defense witnesses to so far testify have been asked about who was screaming. Tonight, we learn another piece of evidence will become admissible, the amount of marijuana in Trayvon Martin's system that night. Diane. Matt Gutman reporting it again for us tonight. And